appreciate that. I'll tell you what. We, we, we just learned to love this place. You know, when uh, the first time we ever, we ever had to come to the Dallas-Fort Worth area, we were awfully afraid, where you always are when you're a long ways from home, to crowd that you never have picked for before. But I'll tell you what, this, this is the easiest place in the world to fall in love with people. Not only our crowd that comes here to, to hear us, but uh, WB and all the folks involved just treat us so good. And I don't know, it, it just seemed like although we're like about 850 miles from where we live, seems like when we come out here we're home, people treat us that way, folks meet us in the lobby, and... Uh, and we've just, we just got more friends here than you could ever believe, and it about tickles us to death, I'll tell you that. And we, we, we've sold a lot of our history books here at our record booth, and we've been having so many people ask us about our trip to Europe. As you know, in that book, it shows us singing on stage in Spain and Germany and Holland, some of the places around the, the, the world that we, we sang at. And we, we've had so many people ask us about the hardships over there and what we went through. You know, we were there for three months. And, uh, and I kind of answer a question or two here, just one question, one hardship we had, and that was food. We made it real good as far as buying, you know. We'd done a lot of shopping while we were there. We had three months. We'd done two programs a day, six days a week. But we had the time off in between, and we always went shopping. We didn't have too much money trouble. We just held it out, and whatever we was buying, they took what they wanted. We, we never could savvy the marks and all that kind of stuff, you know. But uh, we, we had ourselves a mess of trouble eating. Now, uh, the girls, I never heard them grumble or complain about anything, but we started out in Morocco. And boy, you can't believe they don't know what streak lean thickening gravy is in Morocco, I'll tell you that much. We about starved to death. We was there for a week. And the only thing we could get to eat was a native dish called Kush Kush. And Kush Kush tastes exactly like it sounds. <laughs> you ever eat it? <laughs> it's made out of dried goat meat and desert vegetables. And if you think dried goat meat tastes bad, honey, you ought to eat some desert vegetables. We could get it down, keeping it was the problem, you know. Well, the, the girls, after we was there three or four days, they had lost four or five pounds and, and losing steady and grumbling. And they just kept on, you got to come up with something for us to eat. And I said, well, now look, man, these people, they don't even write right. How am I going to read what to say? So I told them if they would hold on a few days, we'd be in Spain. And I felt like when we got to Spain, we'd be more our kind of people. And I felt like I could converse with the Spaniards better, you know. And we, we landed in Madrid, Spain. That's where our first program was. And we went in this, went in this beautiful restaurant and sat down. And, and the waiter came over. And, oh, I mean, he is a sharp fella. And he, he bowed at the waist. He done all the things they do in Spain. And he handed us a menu. And the girl said, see, you, you can't read this either. And I said, you, you just hold on. I wasn't born yesterday. So I looked up at this fella, and everybody agreed they could eat a fried chicken easy. So I looked up at this old boy, and I, I first I just said, look, we want to order three fried chickens. And he just shook his head and said something like, no comprehendo or something. They said that everywhere we went. And, 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 and so the girl said, see, he can't understand you either. And I said, you just wait a minute. So I clucked a little bit for it. I figured a chicken clucks the same way all over the world. <laughs> but evidently it don't. <laughs> he, did, he just grinned a little bit and shook his head at me again, you know. So... So I even erred a time or two. <laughs> he enjoyed it, but he didn't know what it meant. <laughs> By then, everybody in that restaurant was laughing at us. And listen, I'd have laid him an egg if I could have. <laughs> J 
just to show him that all we wanted was three fried chicken. He, he never did get it, and, and I, I, got, I got tired of it, and I just told the girls, I said, we're going to take this menu. I said, little Jan, you order number one. I'll order number two. Jerry ordered number three, and whatever they bring, that's what we'll eat. In a little while, our food come back, and little Jan had what looked like a piece of white pork with some kind of gravy on it. It was real good. And I had what I believe was a veal cutlet, had hot sauce on it, out of this world. But Jerry, <laughs> who has the weakest stomach in our group, I mean, buddy, she don't eat nothing she don't recognize. And then she hunts a hare in it. <laughs> she wound up with 12 little hickeys just about that long and right curly looking. And, and I looked over there at her and she was fingering around through that plate, you know. She looked at me like she didn't know where to eat them or attack them. And, and I told her, I said, now I don't know what that is in your plate, but if I was you, I'd start eating them because it's going to be a long time for morning. And in a little while, she said, poor girl is starved to death. I noticed her taste in one of them. And in just a few minutes, I looked back, and honey, they was all gone. As a matter of fact, she said it was some of the finest food she ever put in her mouth. Said if she could find out what they were, she'd order them again. And in a little while, our waiter came back, and he brought with him a man that we found out was called Senor Hernandez. We found out he owned the restaurant. We found out that he spoke seven different languages. I mean, this boy wasn't nothing but educated. And, and I like educated people. I mean, I'm educated myself. A lot of people wonder why I don't let these girls talk. It's because they ain't got no education. Ain't nobody gonna talk on no program I'm on. They ain't got no education, I'll tell you that. This boy was educated. He came over, listen, he had the blackest, curliest hair I've ever laid my eyes on. He had a little pinstripe mustache. Is absolutely pretty. He had on a, a, a tuxedo with silk lapels. He had a little silk hanky in his pocket, patent leather shoes on his feet, and I was the prettiest man I've ever looked at. He'd, I promise you, he'd make Hovey Lister look like he'd been dead six months. <laughs> How come y'all didn't tell me Hovey was here? Well, anyway, he, listen, he clicked his heels together, he bowed at the waist, and he looked down at me and said, Senor, just like that. And boy, I looked right back up at him, and I said, hey, how y'all? He said, my waiter tells me that he couldn't converse with you, and, and I think I can talk to you. He said, uh, is there something I can help you with? And I said, as a matter of fact, there is. I said, we'd like to know what number three is on this menu. I said, she just eat 12 of them. And, and, and we're curious to know what they are. But before I tell you what it was, let, let me just say this. A lot of people greet a shock in different ways. Now, my wife at home claims if she has a real bad shock, all the blood runs out of her leg, she has to go sit down. If I get a real bad shock, I, I get butterflies in my stomach, and, and, and I can't get my breath real good. But when old leather lungs gets a bad shock, she vomits. It don't matter where she's at, she vomits. Senor Hernandez looked down at that menu and he, he said, the madame had snails for dinner. <laughs> Honey, when he said snails, she just let it all go. <laughs> all over 
over the table, all over the floor, and all over Senor Hernandez <laughs> and his patent leather shoes. <laughs> Listen, this highly educated man from Spain didn't even look excited. He jerked that little lace hanky out of his pocket. He jumped back one pace and said, my, my, she regurgitated. <laughs> regurgitated. You ever heard anything like that in your life? I said, buddy, when you start sopping that up, you're going to find out that old girl done f***ed in your shoes. Well, I just thought you'd like to know how it is when three Georgia clodhoppers go to Europe. 